Hello, everybody. Welcome to Lunch with Linda. I'm Linda Daniels, and you are now inside Northampton Wolves. It's March 27th, 2023, a Monday afternoon now, and we are coming to you on a bright and sunny day. I hope it is starting to feel like spring wherever you are. Don't forget to say hello or push a heart so that we know that there are people there watching us today. You know, Kate and I came in, um, we were both here before 10 o'clock this morning and um, talked about what we were going to get done and what kinds of things needed to be done, changing the window in the front of the store and getting our planning for the rest of the week in motion. We've done a couple of little videos that we are putting up on Instagram. I hope that you follow us on Instagram and can hop over there once in a while to take a look at what we're doing. Um, and the, the window that we're putting up right now is for spring. And we have had a class in the Islington sweater, which has thistles across the top of it. And we've asked some of the people that were in the class to bring the sweater in so that they could be displayed in the window. So that's what we are creating. So if you took that class and I didn't ask you, please bring it in because I would love to have it in there. So we've got those up there for you to see right now. Hi, everybody. Hey, Sally, Bess, Holly and Eileen and Maureen. I saw you flash up there, too. Mm. It's a beautiful day out there, but it's still a little bit chilly in the store. We turn the heater off and I start to freeze and we turn the heater back on just to load it up again. So both Kate and I in talking this morning saw a knitter post an Instagram video on how to make a cable without a cable needle. And I want to remind you guys that everything that I say is strictly my opinion and is no way meant to be judgmental or even necessarily a, um, a put down of anybody else because people are out there all over the place cabling without cable needles. I get it. Go ahead. If you are interested in trying it, try it. Let me know what you think. If it works for you, that's great. Then go ahead and do it without a cable needle. Um, I told Kate that I thought of this person as a knitfluencer and um, somebody who's knitting, who is putting stuff out there and um, hopefully hoping that people will follow her and, and try the things that she is trying. But once again, I sort of feel like we've got great tools to do that. Why not use the tools? You wouldn't tell a carpenter, what do you need a hammer for? You got the end of a screwdriver. <laughs> or, you know, what do you need a screwdriver for? There's butter knives. You can put screws in with butter knives. Use the tool. There's nothing wrong with it. It doesn't really take that much time. If you try it without the cable needle and drop or lose stitches and um, don't know what to do or how to find them, I am more than happy to help you with that. I do have to say that I will help you with this kind of smile. Mm -hmm. um, so be prepared for that. But I will gladly help you find those stitches again and put them back where they're supposed to be. Um, just my opinion. And because those videos are out there, I just wanted to talk about it again. Um, I wanted to tell you that I started to play with the Dreaming Color pooling yarn again, and I've decided to do bobbles in a triangular shawl. So this shawl is increasing both in the middle with yarn overs and increasing at each end with um, knit into the front and back. But I'm still finding the bobbles falling in the same place, which is blowing my mind mm -hmm. because each row or every knit row is increasing by four stitches. So why isn't it throwing it mm. off even more and more? But I'm going to keep going. Um, this might be the last of these that we do, but I did see that there's been a comment and maybe it was even best that told me there's been a comment and a 
um, recommendation or a correction, they've changed the length of the dye color. So if we get it in again, um, we'll see if it's better. But this one is still falling in place. I guess I could just slide them off and op really open it up. I was working on it for a little bit and got in the middle of the row I before. It, it, it does look pretty it's cool, so doesn't it? It really does. And Brianna, who works for me on Saturdays once in a while, is also working on hers. And she is doing a shell stitch pattern. Um, and she's doing it on both the right side and wrong side rows, as am I. I am making bobbles on both knit and purl rows. Um, so you do have to have a little bit of a skill. Because a lot of it is also intuitive. So when I hit the amount of green to make a bobble. Sometimes I only get two rows out of the amount of green. Sometimes I get three. And so I need to be able to switch gears like that and know, okay, I'm going to make a lightly, slightly bigger bobble or I'm going to make a slightly smaller bobble. So it's not, you're not locked into following exactly what the directions are telling you to do. And my bobbles are, are what I would call the wimpiest bobbles ever because <laughs> Oh, Eileen, you did. Thank you. Um, so Eileen, the length was too long for the directions for that scarf directions. Thanks, Eileen. Yeah. Um, the wimpiest bobble because I wanted it to be quick and as simple as possible. So they end, I'm on a slightly larger needle than the, the yarn should really be knit on. It is a sock weight yarn and um, works really well on a size three or four, but I'm doing this shawl on a size six so that it has some lightness to it. So I'm gonna keep working on that anyway, and we'll see what kind of uh, bumpy stuff we got. I decided to do the bobbles too because it's actually National Bubble Week, or was that last week? I think, <laughs> I think it was it last was week. week. But we decided to, to do bobbles for last week. So anyway, that is how that is progressing. So that catches you up, my continued opinion about cable needles and my progress with these bobbles instead of the shell stitch pooling. We got in the latest Fox and Pine stitch stoppers. And boy, you know, I once again thought, oh man, seasonal stitch stoppers. Now we've had such a positive reaction to these. They are fun and they work really, really well. They work on needles from size two all the way up to size 13. And again, we got 15 new ones in, so I'm not gonna show them all to you, but we got cupcakes in different colors. So those are really fun. They look good enough to eat. We got iced coffee mm -hmm. cups in. We got dog paws in different colors as well. Sitting here this morning, somebody walked by with two of matching puppies. They were so small. They were, they were like tiny <laughs> and that person had them all cuddled up in their chest. They weren't oh. even walking. They were so cute. They must have just picked those dogs up somewhere. So we we're like, oh, dog puppies. Um, so yeah, we got the, the paws in different colors. And we're already down to one chicken. <laughs> if you want a chicken, we did put them on the website. If you want a chicken, let me know and I will order more. But right now, all we've got left is one set of the chickens. So we continue to really have a lot of inventory in um, the Fox and Pine Stitch Stoppers. They're doing a great job on coming out with, I knew it, Jen, I knew you would. We've got the chicken for Jen. Um, okay a great job with coming up with lots of different fun ideas. And what a way to make your knitting fun. Just put a new stopper on. And all of us have more than one project going, right? You need more than one set of stoppers to keep those stitches from falling off. So that's one thing that's new. The other thing that just arrived this morning is a box from Quince and Company. And I know what's in here because I ordered it, uh -huh. but I want to open it in front of you guys and you can see what kind of new little presents we got in for this week. It's kind of heavy. Yeah. <laughs> 
I didn't think it was that heavy when he brought it in, but it is. All right, that's one bag. Ooh. All right. Can yeah, can you? Yeah. Kate, thank you. So I mentioned the wool soap from Quince and Company last week when we were talking about moth prevention, and that's what's in this box. They have a very clean um, aesthetic, and that is continued through their wool soap wash. This, I love their logo. Look at that. Which way? This <laughs> way and this way. Is that right? Does that look like sheep? Yeah. <laughs> this way. Thanks, Bonnie. Okay. All right. So this is... This is wonderful. It does come in different scents. So this is the rosewood scent. And I'm going to read the label to you because they, they really take the time to make their products so that they appeal to a lot of um, different people and really take into consideration our world today. So this is natural. It's cruelty-free. It's paraben-free, which is another big deal. And it's made in the U.S. The ingredients are water, of course, olive, organic olive oil, USP lanolin. I'm not sure what USP means, mm -hmm. but lanolin is, I talked about the lanolin in um, wool and how we do want to keep as much lanolin as possible in there. Potassium hydroxide, hemp seed oil, avocado, jojoba oil, and essential oils. And then there are directions um, for about one to two capfuls in a sink of water. And I don't know if you guys can see, but just that little shake that I did, oh my God, it smells really good. Look at the bubbles it has created already. So I'm going to take one of these home this weekend because I think Sunday is going to be a, a start day for me to start washing my sweaters. And I'm gonna uh, let you know what I think about it. USP. USP. USP means in accordance with the quality standards of the United States Pharmacopoeia, so. Okay, so the lanolin that they extract and put Medical in here meets, thanks Bess, meets the um, Pharmaceutical Association in the United States, whatever their guidelines or regulations are. But like I said, it smells really good and I love the way it suds. And so what I think I'm gonna do is put this in the water first and shake it up and that, so that there's lots of bubbles. I love, who doesn't love a bubble bath, right? Um, and it says, if the water clears, garment is still thirsty for more lanolin. Add another capful and soak for 15 minutes. And if desired, rinse. Then enjoy your fresh and happy woolens. So this bottle says it'll be about 30 washes and it's about $21. We got different scents in, um, th like I said, this is the rosewood. Can we, without like, the papers really making a lot of noise. What's this one? Lemongrass. <gasps> lemongrass. And now I'm gonna have to make a choice. <laughs> oh yeah. Smell that. I love lemongrass. That's the- You're gonna love this. Yes. I love that yes. so much. Yeah. That is delicious. Lemongrass, white grapefruit, which is different than I'm pink. I'm interested in smelling that one because I have the pink mm. grapefruit of Yucalan. Mm. See, I made that it's face. Like, it's almost like foresty. Not, it's it's like not my favorite. <laughs> no, I like the others better. It's the white grapefruit, food. it's like a little detergenty smell mm. for me. This is appropriate. And spring. What, what is, the heck is spring? What is spring is it smell mud? like? Oh, daffodils? Yo, know, sweet. A... It's very sweet. Ooh. Yeah, it's that nice. That could be a candy. Yes. <laughs> so those are the flavors that we got in, not for drinking, but for washing your sweaters. So I'm going to choose one, do a couple of sweaters on Sunday, and then on Monday I'll be able to let you know what they are like. We did put them up on the website right away. Yep, um, so if you want to join me in an adventure and try it without getting my review of it, go right ahead and order it. The other thing that we got from them are these bags. This is a much heavier canvas than I thought they were going to be. This is the Twig and Horn, which is a subsidiary of Quince and Company. So they are a really 
Hmm, not what I would call the heaviest canvas, but heavy enough. Have, I thought they would just be like a fabric. Yeah, not and they have the gusseted bottom, so they will stand up there nice and straight. Ooh, and nice, heavy duty um, straps like that. And they're really nice logo. And so what, what, what did we say these were $8? $7.50. $7.50? Yeah. Um, if you want a little, a cute little uh, project bag to carry around uh, for the spring. They are pretty okay. and durable, and I bet they're machine washable. Mm -hmm. um, so that's just an added little feature that we've got in there. This week is a big week for sock knitters because the Lane Magazine um, 52 Weeks of Socks Volume 2 uh, can be picked up on Friday. We have this on the website. You can buy it now. Their 52 Weeks of Socks Volume 1 was a huge success, sold out twice, went to reprint a couple of times, and um, so they put out a call and did a second volume of this. And there are a couple of things in here that are favorites. This pair of slippers I love, and they are slightly felted. They're not felted so that they turn into that, um, you know, almost boiled wool look. They're just felted through once so that they are, um, they are. Oh my gosh. Um, more sturdy, more sturdy than just regular socks. And then look at this pair of socks. Like Isn't that button. incredible? So, 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 so pretty. So I took a quick look at all of the patterns and I've got a couple lined up that I want to make. There are easy patterns and more difficult patterns. So even if you're a beginner sock knitter, um, you would be able to knit from this book. Almost everything is done from a size one up to a size three needle. You will be able to do the method of your choice, whether it's double pointed needles, two circular needles or magic loop. You can convert all of the patterns to that. And there's 52 patterns in here. And I mean, this is a fairly simple sock design, pretty straightforward. And then you're just adding embroidery to it. Okay, I am really in love with the book, even though I am not what I would call the world's biggest sock knitter. I really do like it. And I wanted to encourage um, all of you, or those of you that do knit socks, to take a look at the book and think about getting it. So we're going to do a little contest. If you look at the book and purchase it, you have between now and September 30th to knit five pairs of the socks from the book. If you do that, and bring each one in as you finish it. We're gonna keep record of it on a little um, spreadsheet on the computer. So you'll sign up, you'll bring in a sock, the sock, pairs of socks, five different times, five different socks between now and September 30th. And we're gonna give you a $25 gift certificate to Northampton Wool. So it's not even like a contest. Everybody who enters and everybody who knits five pairs of socks from either volume one or volume two will get a $25 gift certificate for participating. Just like the sweaters that we've got in the window now, I will probably ask if we can borrow a pair or two to show off and we'll put your name on them and make sure that they say, stay safe and sound. So something a little bit fun. Socks are so easy to knit during the summer, really easy to carry around. Kate and I were having a big discussion about spring and summer knitting, especially as we move into April. I've said before, this is the time of year when gardeners start to go outside and garden more, which means that there isn't as much knitting time. Um, but once you get the garden going, there's always the sitting around waiting for the stuff to grow knitting time. Um, so we hope that uh, we can encourage you to pick up that small project and to sit out on the deck, sit out on the patio. Kate loves to sit in the middle of her garden and knit on something just to keep your knitting fingers nim nimble. We know this is the slowest knitting time. And if you didn't know, I'm telling you, it is the slowest. <laughs> it is the slowest knitting time of year for um, knitters in general and 
uh, I hope that we can keep you thinking about knitting, if not doing knitting. Okay, let's see. I just want to make sure I've got this stuff. Yep, that's all of that stuff before I turn the page. So it is a real transition time. Once July hits, the gardens are going full blast and we start to think about what's coming for fall and what we can knit quickly in August and be ready to grow our wardrobes for the fall. So this is that great time to maybe knit something from your stash. Oh yeah, and that's the other thing that I wanted to say about the contest. It can be stash yarn or new yarn. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't necessarily have to be yarn that you purchase in order to do a pair of socks. Use what you've got if you've got it. And if you don't, then we can help you pick stuff out for it. So big contest for the fall, big transition knitting time that we are about to um, enter as the, the weather gets warmer and we all, if nothing else, go out in the yard and clean up a little bit and wait for those flowers to really start blooming. Really wants to know about your sweater. I, uh, so this, this sweater is an old one. It's a real old classic one. It is a self-striping yarn. And I knit this sweater from side to side, from cuff to cuff, without any of the design. You know, I designed that cuff to cuff sweater for Plymouth yarn with a little stitch pattern in it. But this one I did just in stocking that stitch. If you've got that pattern, and it is, can you see it right behind me, Kate? Oh. You're looking at the picture. Just can you see? Because I can't really see that dark. far. It's really dark. So if you've got that pattern, I originally made it for Pendenza. You could use the same pattern and just do it in stocking net stitch instead of with this particular stitch pattern. So that's where my sweater came from. It is an old one. It's probably one of the oldest sweaters that I've got in my closet. And there's absolutely no finishing. So I didn't do an edging around just a little garter stitch at the cuff, but nothing around the rest of the sweater. Um, so this is a turtleneck and this is a sweater. All right, so that's that. And actually I think, I think I might have written this as a different pattern with a strand of mohair and a strand of fingering weight. I'll have to look in the file and if I can find it again, dig it out because it is, it is a simple, good pattern. We, talking about transition week, two things I want to tell you quickly about this week. Um, one is that my granddaughter, Ava, turns 12 on April Fool's Day, so we're getting ready to send her a big celebration box there. But the other one is Kate. Kate's birthday is Friday. Woohoo! We won't ask you how old you are, Kate. I'm really glad I get to work on your birthday, actually. <laughs> I know so many people take their birthdays off and I'm kind of like, why? But anyway, she'll get a chance to celebrate. And if you're around, um, send her your good wishes. She will appreciate that. So Kate's birthday and Ava's birthday. One more thing and then you can go back to your day. There's a yarn that we've had that Kate has knit a lot up with called Seda Cat. Cash Seta. Cash Seta. <laughs> That's why it wouldn't come out. Cash Seta. Yeah. You're getting happy birthdays already. Oh. Um, cash Seta. And it is a oh. cashmere, silk, poly, and Mondale combination. And it's in a tube. I just knit this sweater, which is um, the Waves of Change uh, pattern, out of it for a customer. And in going, getting the yarn for this sweater, realized that we don't have sweater quantity in any of the colors that are left. And it has disappeared off the face of the earth. There, it hardly exists anywhere. Even the manufacturer doesn't have any. Yep, so I took what we have and um, we bagged it up in organza bags. And on the website, we have a free pattern that I did last year for a two color hat. It's called a flower hat. It takes two skeins. And the only reason I did it in two colors is because I ran out of 
the first color that I was using, but I had the second color. So we have bagged it up. It's normally $15 a skein, and we have put it on sale uh, for $20 for the bag. So you get the organza bag and two skeins of the yarn. You, we have a lot of it, as you can see, but no sweater quantities in any of the one colors. We're happy to separate them if you want to do the pink with this um, light green. This we'll awesome. switch them out for you. <laughs> um, Kate has done the cowl. The Pearl Soho bandana cowl. The Pearl Soho bandana cowl. She has done it a couple of times. Um, the Ooh. what's the sweater? It's right. the waves, waves, waves of, of change. change by ba Denise Bayron. Bayron. B a r r o no B a y r o n by Denise Bayron is waves of change. It's a bulky weight um, sweater, and we've had it done in a couple of different things. So we have lots of colors. Free pattern on the website. It takes two skeins to make the hat. You're gonna get the bag for free because it's a slippery soft yarn and if we don't keep it in bags, it tends to turn into spaghetti. Um, it's very, very, very soft, but warm because it has that bulk. So cute. Deb, do you have a question? No. Oh, happy birthday, Kate, I got it, okay. Thanks for um, the birthday wishes, everyone. Yes. <laughs> And um, this, I squeaked this out of seven skeins, but I think black is the only color that we have seven skeins of. Anyway, this is a great bulky weight sweater pattern. Easy, easy, easy to do. And look at the hat pattern on the website. A lot of you knit it when it first came out, um, so you can knit it again. Because now the yarn's on sale. And I won't say it again, because I think I feel sometimes like I say something a hundred times. Okay, that's the story for today. We'll be here Wednesday through Saturday. I will not be here on Saturday. Um, I'm taking Ava's birthday off so we can do a lot big long FaceTime party with her. Um, but Kim and Perrin will be here on Saturday to help you with any of your knitting questions. Um, we've been wrapping up classes. The uh, cable, love cable cardigan finished on Saturday. The skirt class that I'm doing has one more session and then we will be in our kind of like planning time. I'll be thinking about what are we gonna do for the rest of the summer. So watch for emails about that when I do get a schedule up. And um, in the meantime, I hope you guys plan to get some knitting done and that they yeah, are best put the link up to that pattern if you're curious about it. Denise has actually, um, there's a lot of people who have made the sweater and Denise has actually become a pretty big influencer in the design world for knitters. So she's got a great story. She was at one of the people that was at Vogue Knit Live in New York City this past time that they had it, I think in February, January, February, can't quite remember. All right, so that's the story. I hope you all find time today to go knit something. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>